Welcome back, everybody. Glad you guys are tuning in for another episode. And hopefully you guys are doing well today. So we have Peaches, the Pearl Burmese Python. And she's doing very well with her attitude as she's getting bigger and growing. She's getting more docile and more friendly, which is fantastic since she's going to be a very large snake at some point. She'll be two in November. She's on small rats pretty much every two weeks. I could feed her once a week if I really wanted to push her growth a little bit more, but I think the two week mark is doing pretty well for her. She's grown a lot this year. Really excited for next year because uh, she's definitely going to be uh, growing well this winter. Next year, hopefully we can take her outside a little bit more as she gets bigger. She's a little curious, but not too much. So, you guys want to know how Pop-Tart's doing? She's somewhere in here and, oh, that's right. She pooped in the water again. So that's, I don't give you guys daily updates, but every day, that's what I get to do. Clean out eight gallons of water, clean that, and refill it with eight gallons of water. So. I really don't fill it all the way up because every day I'm changing it. Some people say they wish their snakes pooped in water because it would be easier. Um, I kind of wish you would poop on dry land because you can just scoop it up, throw it away, and not have to do this. But, oh well. I'm pretty used to it by now and it's only going to get worse as uh, she gets older. Um, so I went live a couple nights ago, which was really fun with you guys. Uh, I'm going to start doing it on StreamYard as an open platform if you guys want to join in, if you guys want to go on the camera, if you guys want to show your snakes, which I would love to see what you guys own and how you house them, or what cages you guys have them in. So I'll, I'll try to do a 24-hour notice if you guys want to jump in. I don't know how many people StreamYard holds. I think it does like four, maybe more. Um, but just let me know if it, that's something that you guys would be interested in doing. When I was on live, quite a few of you wanted to see the moon glow. So I guess I don't show her very often. And this girl is coming out of blue. So she should be shedding in the next couple of days. So she doesn't look perfect. And there is a little bit of a blood stain from her last feeding. I do feed her frozen thawed. But if I, I noticed that if I thaw the rats out in the refrigerator, they bleed. So I'm probably not going to be doing that too often. So I don't, this is a pretty bright light on a, on a white snake. I don't know. Maybe that helps. So the moon glow is the anatheristic, the albino, and the added hypo. And this girl looks really, really good. 2020. Um, I've seen some adults where there are, pretty white uh which is really cool honestly i i really like the, how the adults look so that is the moon glow and then might as well show you guys the snow as well because they're kind of the same the snow is this is the male 2020 as well months apart probably about seven or eight months apart so the male is the anatheristic and the albino. It just does not have the hypo. And the, I've seen adult snows. Now it all depends on if they use the call or the sharp genes. And both of these are the, the call. So I know the sharps can be much more vibrant. But even with the call, the, the snows get pretty vibrant yellow as adults. And then the bands, on the saddles and then the markings on the tail, they they get pretty white. So it's a really cool combination with both of them, honestly. So this is the snow and the moon glow. And it's really cool to get snakes that kind of change colors as they age. So I've no so I've noticed that the IMGs definitely do that. The moons. Um, the snows, the Argentine boas do that. I would love to show you guys the Argentine. I almost had her out to, for this video, but she is in deep blue. So I'll just show you guys next week when she, uh, when she sheds out, when she has her really nice looking skin and well, she's going to grow and she's growing 
pretty quickly. I have seen some Argentines that hit 10 feet, which is ridiculous. That will be exciting when she's full grown. Then the, um, the IMG, Motley, Hypo, Jungle, and this is, uh, this is a double head with the Anery and the Snow. So it's basically het for snow. So it's the Albino, um, which is perfect for the male. So it would throw everything that she has. And then possibility, if the double heads hit, make IMG Snows, IMG Moonglows, and possible IMG Moonglow Mollies, no Mollies, you know, a, a bazillion different things. But yeah, four years, four years on the female, two years on a male, maybe 18 months. I, I don't know if you can go any lower than the 18 month mark. I'm sure people have though. So let's check out just one more really fast. And... I know a lot of you guys do like the the locality snakes. So this girl right here is a true red tail. The Guyana red tail. Beautiful markings on her. Just really, really nice uh, colors on her body. And then her tail is just wild looking. Super bright red. Almost blood red. And the really cool thing about the Guyanas, the Peruvians, and the Surinams, and I'm sure there's a couple other localities. As they age, their tails just keep getting redder and redder. And they I don't think I've ever seen a true red tail boa ever fade out on the tail. But that's just me. I mean, I don't really see a hunt, like tons of them, but I've seen a few adults floating around and uh, I mean, they just look extremely nice as adults, even as babies. And you can find these really anywhere. The true locality, um, I don't know, maybe around 400. But if you want to get like the specialty ones from like Widow's Peak or something, uh, you know, you're probably going to be paying around $1,000. Look at that tail. Nice whites, nice blacks, nice reds. Just looks really, really nice. And then Peaches is getting a little curious of what's going on and she's very active i'm surprised on how much she loves to climb and it's just how curious she actually is and she's a 2007 extremely small had a lot of feeding issues with her as a baby but she's on rats and she'll eat every week for me she does shed quite often which is definitely a good sign i don't know if her if she'll grow to be full size just because of what happened when I got her. Um, like she would eat, but everything she ate, she would throw up and she got super skinny, really thin. You could basically see her, her bone structure and I didn't think she was going to make it, but I was feeding her itty bitty mice. She kept down the mice and I was feeding her small mice for a while. And there she is. She's looking good. She looks really healthy though to me. Um, and we'll just see what her growth is as she, as the years pass on. And I, no, there's no rush for her. I'm not going to start throwing her an unnecessary amount of food just for her to, to bulk up because I'm not breeding her and I don't have anything to breed her with. So on some other notes, I just saw Nerd dropped 20 baby green anacondas and I messaged him. Cause I want a male. I got two females and I need a male. So possibility if I can get on the list with nerd, not that I need a nerd green anaconda, but any male would do. And I think one from him would be pretty cool to have. So who knows? I mean, I'm sure that list is a mile long and who knows if I can get picked out of that group, but hopefully, hopefully that happens. Hopefully we can uh, see in the future of keeping the hobby alive with the green anacondas because that's like my biggest that's like the biggest thing that i want to do is i mean breeding ball pythons and boas would be really cool too but i really 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 want to breed pop tart and mountain dew i just think that would be an awesome project to to dive into and see what happened so that's it i really appreciate the support on the channel hopefully you guys like seeing some of the snakes and have an awesome day i'll see you guys on the next video